historic window restoration in Lexington. So um, let's, one of the first things I want to tell you, one of the first things I want to say, this whole presentation goes back to one thing that I'm going to, I have been told time and time again to not reinvent the wheel, and I very much disagree with this, because the only reason this worked for Lexington is because we went back to the drawing board and said, what are our problems, not what are other towns doing, what are this, we looked at it on a very, very basic level. So in Lexington in 2015, we have worked with the city of Lexington. I am a nonprofit, so we work with the city of Lexington. We had 435 boarded up windows within six blocks, pretty much. Um, I could count maybe six buildings that had glass windows in the second floor, and this is second floor windows, by the way. <laughs> um, maybe six buildings total at this point that either had decent windows enough to where you could keep the birds, the rain, and everything else. We had everything from plywood to chicken wire is the best one. Um, we we're still trying to figure out how the floor didn't rot in that building. Um, but the city said we wanted to put together a commercial maintenance code to kind of encourage slash force these business owners to at least maintain their property safety standards. Um, I actually brought with me today the kind of checklist that they go over when they go through our downtown that gives them kind of a rating system for how they um, rate the building if they are going to say, hey, this needs to be fixed, hey, this doesn't need to be fixed. Um, but in doing that, because we have 435 boarded up windows, um, our property owners were pitching a fit, saying, you cannot make me do this with my building, you cannot make me upgrade it. And so we said, what can we do to help? In doing that, we created what we call the Historic Window Grant. It is a grant that has no cap on the total amount that we will give them, but it has a total per window cap. So we will give up to $400 of a, to a double hung window, essentially, not a storefront window. That amount actually was, um, after doing a bunch of estimates on different sizes in our buildings, it's come out to about 30 to 40% of the total cost of the window. Um, some, it's better than others just because some are um, our grant actually was official in 2015, but the ordinance did not go into effect until 2016. The, it took the city council about an extra year to actually work on it and continue moving forward with that. However, we put our grant in place and people, because they knew it was coming, started to work on their buildings. And actually, because of this ordinance, I had about nine different properties that were not being worked on that were sold because the owners didn't want to do the work to fix the windows and so they sold them, which was awesome because now these buildings all have windows. Um, I wanted to go ahead. There should be a hundred copies. Should be. So basically that is the checklist that each property owner gets. Every building in downtown has been inventoried at this point and every property owner has received a letter with what they have to fix and what they, um, what's okay. Um, every building in, in tends to be in about the yellow of that. Um, not major things that need to be upgraded. None of them have been condemned at this point. Um, but I've got a couple pictures to show you. This is why. This building that you hear is one that received a grant, um, and we basically now follow, we follow the Secretary of Interior standards, but they say if you have it, you have to repair it. If you don't, you can replace it. This building, the property owner was not quite happy because he had to repair what he had because it was in fairly decent condition, missing a few panes, but um, that property received a facade grant and a window grant. So we have a facade grant as well, and one does not negate the other. You can get both. This was actually one of the first projects that went into, um, the building was sold, the people had owned it since 1915, it sold in 2015, 100 years, and um, the new owner what, knew he had to put in these windows, was ready to do it, and that actual was our first building sale because of this, because the owners were just like, we don't want to do any maintenance on it. Um, and like I said, it actually was done before the ordinance, it was actually mandatory, so it was done in 2015, it was the second project. This is the side of another one. Um, this was our largest property to date. It was 39 windows total that needed to be repaired. That's where it, um, 
It is now a beautiful functioning gym. If anybody was at my regional meeting, we went in that really cool space. This was our very first project. A lot of questions we had, especially when the city council was coming up with this um, ordinance, was, well, what's wrong? It's decorative. It doesn't look like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's wrong? It's decorative. Um, and Jeannie, our, the owner of the candy factory, was actually one of those. She's, uh, but when she said, I'm going to be a team player, and I want to be the first one to do it. So she actually... Um, pull the trigger for anybody else. And that was one of the questions that city council had when they put in the commercial maintenance code is, well, if it's decorative, why, what's wrong with that? And another city councilman said, well, what do you consider decorative? I consider one thing decorative, you consider another thing, so we better you know, make it quite solid what it's going to be. And that's why I came up with, you gotta put a window in, because one of the other city councilmen said, I could consider chicken wire decorative. <laughs> This was one of the buildings that half of it was done. Um, so there's a, about another 12 openings down the side of the big building and it's double windows. And she said, well, Main Street is perfectly fine. This building faces Main Street, the second's on um, Second Avenue. And did not want to do the ones on the side because it didn't face Main Street. This ordinance goes all the way around, all the way around. Um, back windows, front windows, side windows, it does not matter. Um, it addresses a lot of other things but we, in layman's term, call it the window ordinance. It addresses quite a few other things you'll see there in the checklist, that windows are not the only thing, it's just one of the reasons this was created. This was another property that happened in 2015 and they're, they were currently working on that, but you can see, I mean, it was just plywood up there, white plywood, and it stuck out quite a bit. So, like I said, you know, it's not innovative in terms, it's a grant, we created a grant. The end process is not, you know, anything new. But what I'm saying is you need to go back to the drawing board for your town. A window ordinance or a window grant in a town that doesn't have so many boarded up windows really is not gonna benefit anybody. For us, um, like I said, it was 435. We've been successful in opening 290 of them. We still have a little ways to go. In two and a half years for a town that is lucky if lucky in a good year if we can get close to a million dollars in investment in two and a half years just the projects that have been based off of the windows because they don't stop at the windows i've had building rehabs based on this i've had nine properties sold from property owners who didn't want to do anything to their buildings to i have some new blood they're putting businesses in it's generated 4.1 million dollars based off those projects alone and i have one retail space currently available and three office spaces in uptown that are ready to be rented. Some are under renovation at the moment. But there's literally nowhere to go in our downtown but up, and so it is really, for us, it worked. For us, it worked. You have any questions? That's in the mind. Okay. <laughs> Um, it is, it does have some legal ramifications. We've got three that I can think of off the top of my head that have been given warning letters, and the city's about ready to start taking them to court. Yes? How much does this cost as far as your payout for your grant since you've done this? And also, what do you do about bricked-in windows as opposed to just boarded? Bricked-in windows do not count per the city's ordinance. If they want to open it, I will help pay for it, but they do, are not made if it's bricked over. Um, as far as how much money that they put into it when the city created the ordinance in, so it's, we started in 2015 and we had no help in 2015. In 2016, when they put the ordinance into place, the city council said, we're gonna up your facade grant appropriation. So our facade grant comes directly from an appropriation from our city and it went from 15 to 50. Um, and we used every single bit of it the last, um, so it was about this year, We've had 100,000 specifically for windows, and we've used every bit of it. And that's in addition to your original facade grant that's not yes. appropriated for the come together? Um, we, about, about, out of that 100,000, we can use it as well. We can use it however we want. It's not specific to, uh, they don't force us to make this for windows, this for facade. Um, probably 20 of it has been facade and 80 of it has been windows. Thank you, Rebecca. Time's up.